Great. Yeah, so we are very excited to have you on International Microorganism Day. Uh, Anna Bellin and Janusz Gorik join us representing the Croatian Microbiological Society, and um, they are both here to tell us about their Microbiology Society service learning project in the Society of Microbes. So enough from me. Let's get on with your talk. Um, we'll just make sure you can share the screen. Yeah, um, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, cool. Cool. Perfect. So yeah, we can see your screen and um, I'll let you begin. Okay. Um, so um, I just wanted to tell you a story, a short story from the perspective uh, of a project coordinator. Um, and um, um, I will tell you about how we got the idea. Um, um, how we developed it and about the project itself uh, and Anna later on will tell you her perspective as a mentor and the participant of the project. So how did we embark uh, 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 on, on this adventurous journey? I believe that every society within FEMS uh, has um, public outreach and educational activities uh, in its uh, uh, mission and vision, and so does the Croatian Microbiological Society. However, these activities should be strengthened, uh, at least in our, in our case. Um, so what did we do? Um, many of us had visited Micropia, the first museum of microbes in Amsterdam, um, before that, and uh, we were really inspired uh, on how they uh, show the versatility and the importance of microbes in, in our lives. Um, and um, well, we wanted actually to do a, a virtual museum uh, uh, of microbes because we knew we had no resources to, to have a real one like Micropia. But what really triggered um, the development of the idea was uh, when uh, Anna saw this call of, of the European Social Fund for project uh, supporting um, uh, NGOs and the Creation Microbiological Society is an NGO actually, and uh, academic institution, institutions uh, to uh, implement service learning um, into the curricula of the, uh, their academic institutions. Uh, of course, nobody knew at that time what service learning was, and Dana will uh, explain you a, a little bit more about it uh, later on. And uh, um, we wanted uh, to do a microbiology public outreach and do this virtual museum of microbes, but actually the set of aims, the general and specific aims, was uh, uh, given by this call and uh, we had to um, uh, develop such a project to fulfill these goals uh, and uh, th the main thing was to implement service learning pro uh, programs into the academic curricula to strengthen the NGO capacities and to strengthen uh, the collaboration between academic institutions and uh, uh, NGOs. Uh, so, um, it took us uh, three or four months to develop this project, uh, Anna and me, uh, mostly, and uh, we submitted it in uh, 2017. Uh, uh, after about a year, it was uh, approved and uh, we started the activities in March 2018. And after 22 months, we finished this project uh, uh, this uh, January. Uh, and um, the budget for such a complex set of activities was not so great as, as you can see here. So uh, when I pitched the idea at the General Assembly of the Croatian Microbiological Society, everybody wanted to participate, but we had to uh, keep the consortium uh, uh, at some reasonable number of partners, but we still ended up with partners from two different towns, three different universities, five different faculties uh, or schools, uh, and plus uh, academic institutions, we had two additional uh, NGOs. Of course, the Croatian Microbiological Society was the lead partner, but uh, we were joined by Bioteca, uh, a, um, a non-government organization promoting biology and similar uh, sciences, 
and BIUS, which is uh, the Association of Biology Students. Uh, the idea was to have users that will directly benefit from the project, and these are pre-graduate students, university teachers acting as mentors in this project, and volunteers uh, of all three NGOs. Um, we can say that indirect users is everybody with some um, knowledge, basic knowledge of science and microbiology, like school children, probably from the age 12 onwards. Uh, but actually, uh, the outputs of the projects are public, so anybody can uh, benefit uh, from it. So how did we do it? We had to uh, come up with uh, different sets of activities uh, to fulfill the project goals. And uh, first group of activities uh, uh, actually related or uh, was uh, aimed at schooling mentors, schooling university teachers in service learning, in promoting science, because not all of us actually had previous education on that. Uh, the second set of activities included recru recruiting students from our uh, uh, courses. Uh, implementing learning, uh, uh, service learning in microbiology at our uh, university curricula, uh, doing the syllabus. And uh, when um, uh, the students actually joined in, uh, the, the third set of activities included um, uh, preparing them to uh, do the material for the um, uh, Virtual Museum of Microbes, to do the public outreach, through public lectures for citizens, uh, to do the outreach through workshops uh, with school children. Um, and uh, it also included a lot of uh, publicizing activities, logistics, uh, uh, and presentations at the scientific conferences too. So uh, you, you see how a complex set of activities we set out to, to do. Um, but the embodiment of the initial idea uh, that prompted the, the application of uh, this uh, project um, is the Virtual Museum of Microbes. Uh, we at the end called it Microseum and you see the website here, you can visit it, it's free, it's available in Croatian and in English and it's an interactive modular website and because we had nine mentors uh, in this project uh, for, for starters, we have nine different topics um, and um, uh, we imagined it as a, a house with nine different rooms or spaces um, and um, uh, in each space you can find this uh, different uh, topic. So you, you are free to uh, visit the website, uh, to visit our microseum um, and to, to explore each of the rooms, each of the microbiological topics. So um, uh, just to conclude, um, uh, we had uh, really many people involved uh, in, in this project from um, uh, three different universities, two different towns, uh, three different uh, non-government organizations. Uh, uh, we had uh, 38 students involved and initially we had planned 18, many students were interested. So uh, what have I learned um, as um, a teacher at the university, but also as a person and, uh, and a member of the Croatian Microbiological Society? I have learned a, a little bit more of microbiology, but uh, uh, I have developed um, a whole different set of skills because I needed to coordinate uh, uh, 62 different people from different places. Um, I had to uh, coordinate uh, working with illustrators, with uh, web designers, with different uh, professions uh, uh, within this project. And uh, it was similar for the students. And um, you can read here a version of a student's concluding remarks. Um, um, and if I may comment on it, I would say that it was similar for students uh, as well. So um, um, just to conclude, um, we managed to do the promotion of microbiology, service learning, 
and develop the, the capacities of the Croatian Microbiological Society in, in one project. And I'm very thankful that I had a chance uh, to participate in it. And now Anna can take over and tell her side of the story. She was the mentor uh, in this project. Uh -huh. One moment just to share my screen. So yes, I'm Anna and I will tell you a few, uh, a few words from a mentor's perspective. Uh, so to begin with, I just have to shortly um, introduce myself. Apart from being a member of Croatian Microbiological Society, I'm also a, a teacher working at the Faculty of Food Technology and Biotechnology as an assistant professor. Uh, I'm a microbiologist with a background in uh, biology and ecology. So what was my motivation to get involved in this project? Well, my main motivation was that uh, often during my day-to-day -day work, I see that students are unmotivated or not motivated enough. And of course, this makes my uh, job harder and I would like to work with the motivated group of students. Uh, not to blame, blame the students, I think uh, often it is not really their fault, but uh, they just don't see sometimes the point. Um, what is the point of learning the things we are trying to learn them? And they don't see the connection with their later professional life. And this is connected with an academia which uh, often uh, lives like a self-sufficient self maybe bubble, like uh, learning things but there is no connection with the community no transfer of knowledge from the professors uh, to the real problems in their in the real life although on the paper the mission of every university should include social engagement and then of course how can we expect the students to be motivated uh, to be engaged if, if the professors are often not engaged enough so when the project uh, uh, was uh, discussed within the, our society, I was of course eager to get involved because I thought that service learning might be an answer to these issues. So I will first uh, briefly uh, introduce you to service learning. This is, uh, these are things that I didn't know before the beginning of the project. So I expect that a lot of people still don't know what is this. So this is an educational approach that combines community service with a learning process at the faculties. So it is not a simple volunteering, like if students would um, clean the beach, doing something beneficial for the community, but not learning anything uh, new. It is also not practical work, so like doing some laboratory um, experiments, but without giving anything back to the community. But serving, service learning is really like a combination of learning and the community service, meaning, for instance, that uh, students can take some samples of water, can analyze them in the laboratory, can think critically about the results they get, then they can think about the possible solutions to some um, community problem. And then they can get, go back to the community and provide uh, expert knowledge and, um, and maybe possible solutions to some problems. So society should benefit from the learning, but also uh, the, the society puts the learning in a different context, meaning uh, it gives uh, a new meaning and uh, enriches the learning process. Of course, before even uh, becoming a mentor of a service learning project, me and my uh, eight other colleagues from Croatian universities had to learn what we have to do. So we, we enrolled uh, several um, workshops, learning about uh, service, service learning, what is it, uh, how to make a good service learning or mentoring program, and maybe most importantly, how to, how to think uh, outside of our academic boxes, meaning how to present uh, complex subjects uh, in uh, simple words, in few words, and maybe in, uh, in a graphical way for everybody to understand. And most of these things were quite new to us. 
Um, in the next stage, uh, we enrolled uh, the students. Uh, they were very eager to participate, indicating that students are really not so not motivated or unmotivated, but maybe they are not offered enough um, uh, to get their attention at the standard curriculum. Uh, my group was five beautiful girls that you can see here in the picture. Uh, Edina, uh, Ivana. Ivana, you will hear in a couple of minutes. She will give her perspective of the project. Uh, Anica, Anna and Tomislava. And our task was to have a microbiological topic. Our topic was antimicrobial resistance and uh, to present it in three different ways. So to present it on an educational web page that Diana, Diana already mentioned as a lecture for general public and as a workshop for elementary school children. And the first task was the hardest, uh, uh, to present the topic uh, at Microsium. So uh, this took many months. Um, uh, it was hard work uh, with lots of rounds of corrections, of sharpening our, our ideas, of uh, discussing st with students and uh, uh, about our ideas. And we had several problems. Um, so for instance, how to present the complex subject that we know a lot, of, a, a lot about, but with simple words and with the word limit or with graphical schemes, uh, we had to take care that to be original and interesting uh, all the time because uh, we know that the uh, attention span of an average web surfer is very short. And still having in mind that the presentation should be scientifically accurate. For instance, we had the problem already with the title. We were forbidden to use like complex and hard words, like resistance is a hard word. So we, so we had to go around, the, uh, around it and make a simple title. Also, we had issues with, within like a uh, group style of working, like uh, how to be critical, but still constructive. Students were often shy to maybe share their uh, opinions and I had to push them to tell them what they think and to, this is the best way to uh, evolve ideas. We had to communicate with the rest of the large project team that Diana uh, mentioned, like uh, people from other fields of expertise, like web designers, like illustrators. Uh, as this was new to myself, new to the students at also. But through the process, we were evolving our idea. And I will just briefly uh, show you how we presented the topic in, in a very, very general way. So we, we uh, thought that uh, this will be presented like a boxing match, like a comic book presenting a boxing match between uh, antibiotic and uh, pathogenic bacteria. And so this boxing match uh, has three rounds, each round depicting one uh, uh, moment in time, like a uh, golden era of antibiotic discovery when antibiotics were still very strong, then rise of the superbugs or antibiotic resistance where antibiotics were getting weaker, and the students were eager to have also this last round where we tried to show how scientists are trying to the, the solve this problem and are working day to day in the laboratories to have new solutions for the antimicrobial resistance problem. I invite you, of course, to see this all in detail and not only this uh, topic, but all other eight interesting topics that are presented at Microsium. While working on this, um, um, this part of the project, which, which was very hard, and I'm sure that other mentors would also uh, tell you that this was the hardest part, and students also, uh, we got to know each other very uh, good. Uh, and uh, at some point, uh, service learning started to really like pay off, meaning that uh, students uh, got into the subject and they became, be, were becoming more and more independent, like more and more active participants. And I was turning from like a critical mentor, uh, pushing them all the time to like a passive bystander, more or less passive bystander, like a proud, proud and passive bystander. Parent. 
Almost. Parent. <laughs> oh, yeah. And becoming a parent, yes. <laughs> yes like a parental perspective just giving a few suggestions here and there but girls really then from this point did most of everything alone uh they had very successful uh, public um, lecture in a, in a library they were very competent to answer the questions and you can imagine how this is now very different from your standard classroom uh, i mean giving a lecture and uh, being really an active participant in the learning process and the last, um, hmm? sorry, I think, uh -huh, okay. The last part was to uh, create a workshop for children. Again, students work, uh, worked by themselves. I had a very uh, successful like uh, workshop for like young children, even younger than Diana mentioned, like nine or 10 years old. Uh, in the part of the workshop, they had like uh, designed uh, a board game on antimicrobial resistance with a very elaborate set of rules. And children were very satisfied. Satisfied, they gave very positive feedback. And uh, it was not so easy, as you know, if you if you had any workshops for children before, it is easy to make a good plan but it is hard to stick with the, with the plan because children are like having their own ideas uh, where the workshop <laughs> should go next. <laughs> and now to conclude our experience, we, after we ended the project, we are still with service learning because we really like the process and we are trying to implement it in our everyday teaching. Like, we implement it in existing courses, some of the mentors, and some of the mentors are uh, already made new courses that are solely based on this teaching approach in microbiology and in biology in general. And just to conclude, as a mentor, uh, my motivation is high when a student motivation is high and when I see such a proud and happy faces of my students, and service learning really showed me that involvement is the best way of learning. And that's all from me. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you both. Um, we're gonna get straight on now with our next speaker because yes. we're a little over time and we need to finish this session within the hour. But seeing as it's all part of the same project, I hope you can, you can share uh, the time nicely. We have Ivana, okay, wonderful. Let's just make sure your microphone is on. Cool. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Fantastic. Great. So do you have a, a presentation to share? Yes. Yeah, right. awesome. We'll, we'll just let you get on with it then. And okay. um, yeah, try and stick to time and leave roughly 20 minutes for your next speaker. But we'll get okay. on with the talk now. Can you see my presentation? Is everything all right? All perfect. All perfect. Great. So hello everyone, I'm Ivana, currently I'm studying biotechnology at a faculty of food technology and biotechnology. It's a great honor to be with you today and I would like to shortly tell you my personal impressions of a service learning project you've just heard about from my mentors. Uh, I had the honor to be part of this great project from its very beginning to its very end. And that's why I think I'm a right person to tell you something how I uh, find it or how what I learned, what I think we did right, what I think we did wrong. Um, I'm not here to criticize Croatian educational system. Actually, I think it's pretty good. I like the thing I study. I think I acquire a pretty good amount of knowledge. Uh, we have some opportunities to to work in laboratories. But actually, the big problem is appliance of that knowledge. So this project, the service learning project, was great for me because I had an opportunity to apply my knowledge and to educate even uh, younger children and the uh, great uh, masses, pu public, uh, pub general public, I really had an opportunity to do something with my knowledge, not only to learn something and to forget it after my exam. Uh, this, this kind of project, it's not really often in Croatia. This is something um, pretty rare, pretty new, and that's why it's extremely valuable for, valuable for me, and that's why I'm extremely happy I was a part of it. Um, this, the whole thing started for, for me, for, for our students in February of last year. We had initial meeting where our mentors, our professors, 
uh, explain to us what service learning is, uh, what is the main idea behind it, what they wanted to do with us. And in that moment, I had many different perceptions, many different ideas, not only me, the rest of the students. And uh, during the whole process, we had to, to change some of our ideas. We had to, we did many mistakes, definitely. We fight a lot about it. Compromise wasn't always an easy thing to do. We invested a lot of time, a lot of hard work, and I think we actually did something. I think the success is here. Uh, we actually did a successful workshop for children. We did successful presentation for general public, but I think our biggest, biggest success definitely is a formation of a microzeum. You heard about it. It's a virtual, virtual museum of microbes. Uh, this is something we never did before. Uh, the problem in, in Croatia is also the lack of materials on Croatian language about microbiology, about uh, microbes, and I think that's a great success that we did. Um, we used many skills. We acquired some skills from the project. We had some of them before the project. Uh, I think the most important thing for myself was the teamwork. I'm actually not a great person in a teamwork, but here I had to make compromise with five different people, with five different, with five different mindsets, five different kind of ideas. Uh, compromise, as I said, wasn't always easy thing to do. Uh, even though the five other people which I worked in, in the team were actually great, great people, uh, sometimes it's, it's complicated to, to uh, make up an idea which is acceptable for, for more of the parts of the scenes. Um, I also uh, acquired some uh, teaching skills. That is something I never did before, uh, same as with other, other students in my team. Uh, we actually never got in contact with a group of children which are not our relatives or something. So teaching skills are definitely something new. Also working with children themselves. Uh, we, we were really, really looking forward to workshop with children. And uh, in, in, the, in the end, some of the children weren't really uh, easygoing. Some of them were really active. Some of them were stubborn. And definitely that kind of patience definitely was an important thing we acquired from the project. Uh, we also did some lab work. It wasn't the same kind of lab work we do in university usually. Uh, usually when you're in university, you do an experiment and you know what you have to, uh, what will be your final result. In this project, for the first time, we did independent lab work. And I think that is really, really important because that will add up to my work experience. I'm pretty afraid that in a few years I will be out there looking for a job and I really do not have any experience in microbiology apart from university experience and therefore I believe this, this project is a great, great thing for, for my future career, for my CV. Um, also important thing was connecting with colleagues in other professions. Uh, I'm from the uh, Faculty of Food Technology and Biotechnology but I met a bunch of great people from med school, from vet school and we discussed topics about microbiology. Important thing is, for example, I, I perceive uh, microbes as a way of uh, receiving product with, which I could sell. I'm biotechnologist, I will produce alcohol one day. And, and people from med school, for example, their main perception of microbes is uh, pathog pathogens which could cause disease. So that was really, really interesting thing to do. We really talked about it a lot. It was fun. It was really, really interesting. Um, I, I acquired many uh, important life lessons from this project, many things I would apply later in my career, in my life, and I would like to briefly explain a five of things I would uh, emphasize as the most important from this project. The first thing, and the most important, which will stay in my head for a long time, is that sometimes in science, in microbiology, in life, experiments just fail. Um, we had a great idea. We wanted to make a photo of a zone of inhibition for uh, our virtual museum of microbes. We wanted to do a simple experiment, just apply uh, mold and bacteria on a petri dish. And after a time of incubation, we wanted to see a zone of inhibition uh, because molds, as we know, produce antibiotics to protect themselves from bacteria. But we did something wrong because our molds just outgrew the bacteria. Our petri dish looked terrible, definitely not representative for a microzeum. And actually, we didn't see no zone of inhibition. And our first reaction was a really big disappointment because we invested a whole day in that project. We spent a whole day in lab. Uh, this picture here you can see, uh, this is before the very experiment. We were pretty enthusiastic, pretty happy. 
and the final result was really, really bad. But uh, that's okay, that's just something's happened in science, in life, experiments just don't work out. And the lucky thing is that a lot of those pictures with zones of inhibition could be found on Shutterstock, so we just compensate the lack of skill in, in lab. Uh, I believe this was also really, really a uh, teaching good moment because uh, we evaluate what we did, we try to discuss about things we did wrong, and I think we would apply that knowledge later in life and we want to do the same mistake again. Uh, second important lesson from this project was that a good laugh is the solution for everything. Uh, my mentor, Professor Bielan, said in the last presentation that in the very beginning of a project, we try to find a compromise and therefore we, I would say, fight a lot. Um, we weren't just get along from the beginning. We had many different ideas. We tried to, to make a compromise. It wasn't always easy. And um, I think it was a month after the beginning of a project, we had one pretty, pretty great fight. And on the very same day, we tried to film an intro video for our topic for Microzeum. And as you can see on the photo, it was a pretty, pretty funny thing. We laughed a lot. Um, we still have some intern jokes about that moment. And I think that was a moment when everything just got right, when we understood each other. And that is definitely a good lesson that with a little bit of laugh, with a little bit of jokes, you can really do everything. And we did something with it. Um, the third lesson I learned, is that the best way of learning is uh, to be like a child. The children are extremely curious. Uh, I was really fascinated how children who find microbes as something uh, abstract because they can't see them, uh, are so, so interested about them. Um, in the beginning of our workshop, we draw um, a one bacteria cell on, on a whiteboard, and we talked about parts of bacterial cells, and children who never heard for it, uh, really remember the phrases, they remember the expressions, they ask questions, they wanted to see everything, to touch everything, and that was extremely fascinating. I believe if uh, we would be more curious in life, we would definitely have much less problems with learning. Uh, some children definitely weren't that easygoing, as I said in the beginning, they were a little bit stubborn, but it was, it was also a good moment for us because we tried to be patient, we learned how to be patient with children, and that's also thing we would definitely apply later in life. Uh, here in the, in the picture, you can also see um, one board game we created uh, in order to teach children a part of microbial cells. And um, that, that's also one proof how uh, learning through game, through playing is definitely the best way of learning. Uh, my next lesson is that courage is definitely necessary during education general public. I don't want you to understand this wrong. We were not afraid of publicly speaking. We were not afraid of people. We were afraid, we were afraid of great responsibility. Um, we talked about um, antibiotics and the big part of our presentation was uh, rules and advices how to properly take those kind of medicines. And that's definitely a really dangerous field. We didn't want to say something which would make people take medicine on the wrong way. We didn't want to say something which was potentially dangerous for someone's health. And we definitely understood that kind of responsibility. And uh, definitely it isn't something we, we joked with. We really tried to be uh, as serious as possible and I believe we succeeded. Uh, this uh, girl in yellow shirt, you can see in upper uh, right picture, she came to us after the presentation. She told us she wanted to be biotechnologist when she grew up. And that was a beautiful moment because I believe if we did something like that to only one little girl, then definitely whole project was a great success. We did something and I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, my last, uh, last lesson I acquired from this project is the uh, importance of a constructive evaluation. Uh, the project lasted a few months. It was pretty tiring. We invested a lot of time, a lot of effort, especially in the very end of a project. Um, in the same month, there was a workshop for children and presentation for general public. So it was really, really tiring. And after it, we believed we were done. Everything's okay. We were so proud. And then we received a bunch of papers uh, which should be filled in in order to evaluate the project. A bunch of paper with uh, questions about it. And honestly, I was pretty angry. I didn't want to do that. It was boring. Um, I was so tired of a project. But right now, a few months after, I can see that evaluation is probably the most important part. 
because only if you acquire data from, from something, you can make conclusions and you can do a better thing next time. You can, you can, uh, you can, uh, could uh, improve yourself. And um, as a con conclusion from this project is that it was pretty good. I would also conclude for myself that if, if uh, there is another um, opportunity like this in the future, I would definitely do the same thing again. I would definitely want to do a project like this again because I think it's an amazing experience. It's really good for my career. It's a good for myself. And uh, I'm definitely so happy and so thrilled I was able to be part of it. Thank you.